Good evening, everyone. It's time. So we don't want to keep you waiting and we're eager to start right away. My name is Aliona, and on behalf of New York Public Library, I am super happy to welcome here the three room press, Pat and Kat and Peter, who will facilitate today's amazing festival, which will not be boring for sure. So get ready to be excited, get ready for fun, and get ready to, for the real Dada. Thank you. Yes. All right. All right. We're Dada. Okay. And let's go ahead and start out. How many of you know what Dada is all about? Yes. We do. We okay. are the plagiarists. Plagiarists, right? We stole the last plague and we brought it with us from 100 years ago. Right. And that's what we're doing here on this trip. The yes. plagiarists. We stole, we stole from others. Right. We it, took it along with us and we've got ourselves a book full of more plagiarism. Dada so. is um, Dada. Dada, 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 Dada. Okay, so. What you see here is a result of 120 years, 115 years, 110 years, years 105 years 105. of craziness, of madness, of a discussion that, that Dada must uh, be a, a, a thing that makes art relevant again. Dada, after all these thousands of years of art getting more and more refined, the Dada has came out and said, how can you have refined art? when you have slaughtered people on the battlefield, when you have plague. 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 We're the plagiarists. Uh, when you have so much uh, hate and division within the world. Well, what we have is we have Dada to help take that away for a moment and to make, uh, make a, a separate uh, reality, which uh, I think you'll enjoy. And whose cover did who did the cover uh, for oh. this uh, cat? Oh my God! Metanon fifteen. We have we have published incredible artists for for the past fifteen years. Three Rooms Press, of which Peter Karloftis and me, Cat Georges, are co-directors of. We have published um, annually a journal, an international journal of contemporary data writing and art called Metanon. We are now on Metanon fifteen. Um, the cover that you see here was the, of this year's issue is called Side Effects. And it's by an incredible Cuban American artist, Adele Rodriguez. You may have seen a lot of his work on the cover of Time Magazine under Spiegel. Um, he's done a lot of work uh, uh, making uh, uh, interesting uh, versions of Donald Trump. Uh, he's, yeah, yeah, right. He's exhibited internationally with shows in Toronto, Philadelphia, New York, Los Angeles, Spain. He's, his work is inspired by personal history, religious rituals, pol politics, memory, nostalgia, and data. So please check it out. Check him out, especially. And we're going to go on to what this particular issue is all about. Peter. That's right. Uh, we have 200... 42 uh, contributors inside these pages, inside these walls. From uh, how many countries? Uh, from 33 different countries. Uh, that's a good reaction there. And we are the plagiarists. We stole every one of them from uh, out in the world and brought them and put them inside here forever. So, uh, and we have 19 of our favorites here from the New York City area. And, uh, and, and we're all together here for the New York Public Library uh, doing this tonight, doing this Dada thing tonight. Uh, and, and, and our, our uh, uh, 15, uh, edition 15 of Metanon is uh, the uh, theme what's, is, what? What's the theme? The theme is humanity, the reboot. <gasps> so we've been going through a lot here, especially with the plagiarists and uh, and uh, we uh, are uh, ready to reboot humanity. Yep. The only problem is, it's a big problem, reboot humanity, ha! I say, ha! With irreversible climate change, bottomless inequality, blatant warmongering, self-obsessed authoritarianism, and a widespread pandemic, who needs the same world now? The Beckett quote failed better 
may have held some significance in the latter stage of the last century, but at this terminus of existence, it would be impossible for humanity to fail any better. This pinnacle of failure is ours to behold, and we must celebrate. We must celebrate as we do here by creating that which fully reveals the extent of ruin humanity has inflicted upon our planet. Now we fail best. Here, 242 contemporary data artists from 33 countries around the world fail best with their ideas in writing and art about new possibilities for the human species. Is change even possible? Is everything change? What will be the effect of global change, if any? What's an idea fully brought to conception worth? See us fail best and find out. All right, that's a little bit from Mantanon 15. Okay, we have a lot of people here today that are all interested in da 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 da. Let's show a, hand, a round of applause for Dada. All right, so let's go ahead and start our reading on um, our performance, our special I guess, presentation. I guess George couldn't make it, so we're going to start we with love George Wallace, though. Yeah, we're going to start with Amy Barone. So, Amy, please unmute and away we go. Am I okay? Can yes. you hear me? Yes. All right. Well, I'm honored to be in this wonderful journal. Thank you again. Treescape. A peephole to the world outside reveals shades of green, brilliant budding leaves. The collage of trees shines on a pink Japanese maple as big crows probe a patch of dirt. Mockingbirds aren't chirping, they're belting out areas, so much to say after their winter isolation. I invited the morning shower to wash away the cold, help a hardier spring take root. Rain made it easier to stay inside and orchestrate the reboot. And um, my second poem is called Dolce Far Niente. I miss what once was and a little of what followed. My house guest grief returned to Rome. Plague filled air has cleared. Fear compelled me to do little. An Italian art I'm mastering as I reboot. I breathe out like the trees, join them in search of safety. I shop for food like a star-nosed mole. A magical sky casts spells on the striped horizon, treetops glow. In the beyond, scientists give a nod to black holes. Christmas lights in Bridgeport twinkle in reveries. We were happy then, despite the ceiling cracks and moldering beams. Most nights, quarantine dreams intoxicate me. So many people I haven't seen in years. I honed the power to make ghosts appear. Now it's time to own them, own it. Recharge your smartphone. Freedom's on the line. All right. All right, All right Amy. Amy. Thank you. Very nice, wonderful. Okay. We are gonna move on through Dada Dada Wonderland. As you can see, we have quite a show tonight. We have hundreds of people here at the show, and we're so excited to welcome our next reader, which would be none other than Billy Cancel. Billy Cancel. So let's see, Billy. Uh, where is he? Where is I Billy? Better, um. You got to come up there, Billy. Make some noise. Like Turn Monday up. Yes. There he is. Hey, he looks like us. Yay! Look. <laughs> All right. So, Saint Billy Cancel. Monday last was acid bright. Green sickness. I had struggled to surpass cliches 
or the assumption that sky trumpets preempted my smug enlightenment. Bronze dollar piss profit, barber clerics bug humour. Yeah, they're both talking about pre-Lisbon. Alternating between dark purple, fiery orange, so rakes my heart. Your wife in watercolours had gone a wool gathering. The reverse currency, some catch em alive trap. Your garments were totally blown together. The reverse currency, some catch em alive trap. You snarled, walk your chalks, prancing pig, so we may outrun the constable. Cause, effect, custom, habit equals the great sterility. There shall be raw weather and all overish weed choked feel. All right. Diddling around, diddling around with fashion roadkill. Diddling around with fashion roadkill in an axis of crazy attempts. I've apparently had too much air and exercise. I need to break my teeth upon some grain eye dead cargo or go again milk a pigeon because I at least deserve this cushion. <laughs> but the hole in the donut was that after a last cup of the creature, you went point shaving, got loose rattle trap, sucked a mop, bit your own head. Such a slippery slope for small potatoes out in left field aiming for the fence, but we can't get there from here. And I can barely grasp that it's time to lay down the knife and fork. Oh. Billy, cancel! Yeah. yeah! The champion! Okay. The knife and the fork. All right. So we're going to go like this and go like this. And hey! Billy Cancel, wonderful Billy. Thank you so much. Again, this is Peter Carter. Thank, Thank you, Peter. Thank you. I'm Cat George. We're Three Rooms Press. We're doing Dada tonight. Dada with the New York Public Library, and we're we're getting ready for our next reader, who would be none other than Jeff Farr. Jeff Farr, where are you? Come on down. Jeff Farr, you're the next contestant on Dada Dada Night. <laughs> Okay. I'm here. Good. So are we. We're looking for you. Jeff Farr. Keep I'm talking. looking for you. Keep talking, Jeff. There he is. Yay. He's right here. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna look like this and I'm gonna go and show you now, Jeff Farr. Thank you everybody for being a part of this show. Hi, everybody. I wrote a song for Dada called No Plans Today. Are you ready? No plans today except for nothing. But I don't really know ho, ho, what nothing is. What nothing is. What nothing is. What nothing is. No brains today. Accidentally threw them away, but I'm still cooking a huh huh, a thought or two. A thought or two. A thought or two. A thought or two. Or two. No friends today. I'm too 
intimidating, but I can't remember her, their names anyway. Their names anyway. Their names anyways. Their names. Anyways, my plan is to have no plans. My plan is to have no plans. My plan is to have no plans today and every day. My plan is to have no plans. My plan is to have no plans. My plan is to have no plans today and every day. Today and every day. Today and every day. Today and every day. All right, oh, Jeff, where do you go? Go on. Jeff, that was fabulous. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff Farr. Oh, my God. What a night of beautiful Dada here in New York City. I just wanted to say one thing, if you don't mind. Um, you know, New York has always been a Dada city. You walk outside, who knows what's going to happen? And during the pandemic, that, that changed. You know, thing, you walk outside, and whatever happened was going to happen is like, I don't know if I want that. But, you know, little by little, New York is getting its its groove back. And I think that this show, I'm so grateful to the New York Public Library because this show is making it happen. We wanted to do it live. We we're going to have a great time and have an uh, even Who's wider virtual? audience with, with having it uh, virtual. So next up. Who's please, up? Please welcome to the stage. And, and Firestone Unger. There she is. Hi. Hi. Can you hear me, Kat? Great. Uh, I wrote this first poem in 2020 when the pandemic was raging and it shut down our beloved theaters. The ghost light speaks. Here I wait downstage to reassure you. There will come an evening when in the black boxes, Lycos will shine, actors will speak, or perhaps a dog or thunder. Songs will rise. It'll be a surprise. Stories told through action never before seen or seen a zillion times before. Live, flawless, they'll breathe and we with them. I wrote this second poem in 2021. Unfortunately, the window for submission to Maintenon 15 was closed, but I thought you'd enjoy it uh, this evening. It speaks to our theme, Humanity, the Reboot. Outrage. Cup your hands together. Hold your outrage. Contemplate your outrage. Consider its subject, its depth, its value. Reveal your outrage. Discuss it. Deny it. Accept it. Put it aside. Revisit it if you'd like. Don't forget to wash your hands. Thank you. Yay! Thank you, Anne. Thank Firestone you, Anne. Under. Thank you, Anne. Very nice. All right. Love the new piece. And next up, please uh, welcome to the stage. Uh, hold on, please. It's Robert, Robert Gibbons. Gibbons. Robert, you're next. 
Robert, give us. Hi, how is everybody doing? <laughs> Hi, how are Dada? I love to come to the Dada reading. I'm going to read two Yay. pieces. The first one comes from the book. It's called Black Friday. Black Friday. You come every year, appear as an ad or a sale flyer. You want me to buy or try to stand in line. I feel bought or sold. Cower to an institution or a company. Sad rush after the push and pull, deplete of energy. But I stand here like chattel, indigent, bent on consumption. I drink your prohibition. I know do not need you, yet I do follow through to the counter. I pay forward, storyboard my clutter further with the bric-a-brac. My lack is mind control, told I sold myself to the establishment, to wealth management. Then I take it all back and say, I don't need that. The second poem is entitled, thank you, a moth gave me a message on the train. A moth gave me a message on the train. Yesterday, a moth traveled with me on the train a dingy colored body with wing, hood, and torso, thorax and abdomen and geometrics. It hitched for the ride, attached to the side of the seat like a strap hanger, perched a mask of mimicry with big snake eyes looking at me. I was probably as much of a spectacle as it resides there in daylight. Thought time would be night traveler over winter, but it's morning the squeaking violence of the train as his Ebola bound body is cremated, sent back to the dust, back to earth like a comet or an asteroid, back to the prairie of Africa or Crimea, to the upper latitudes where transmigration happens, where we all become exoskeleton, not named by genus or species, not categorized in box or identifying markers. We are one in this indivisible, not the critical mass of human mortality. And the reason Michael Duncan's body floats on the Hudson, he is lost to history. He wants to remain discoverable, not a matter of fact, but in you when you in you window, and the death moth waits in its journey, stationed as a sign of judgment of time. That moth that followed me on the train will come to the end, will shuffle the back road of country past dump trucks as carcasses, the last of warehouses and slaughterhouses, old bread houses and leather factory. He will see the plastic of yesterday. I had to hop that train, but there is more to the metaphor than a place for sitting consummation of air and breath, more than fanaticism and hysterica. I had been there on that train and the death hop swoops and dips in. Thank you so much. All right. Robert Gibbons, thank Robert you. Gibbons, Thanks thank for joining you. us. Thanks for bringing the city with you. Right. All right. Fantastic. OK, next up. Who's we, up next? We've got Megan, Megan Raposo. Raposo. Rupert. Unmute. Hello. Hey. Thank you so much. Ta -da. All right, I have two. Bossy lady, what's her face? Create the drama, intrigue, dilemma, gossip. Are you missing out? Unhappiness. Take offense, pop the lights, swap the gobos, bathe blue, yell bitches, scream, simmer in the dark, on the couch, in the bed, circadian crumble, have a glass, roll your eyes, eat the drama, chew the drama. You need more. Those shoes aren't high enough. At dinner, let your breast fall out. Are you even real if your adrenaline's not pumping? Wide eyes, flat-backed ears, there's not enough ashwagandha. Disembowel the news. Don't listen to science. You don't have to take that shit. Wash your hands. Don't touch your face. Stop arguing. It's not helping. Nervousness and self-doubt. Streamlined, fresh, sophisticated, floppy baby doll eyes. You're not too old, just asleep. Not the same as dreaming, not the same as manipulating. Wash your hands, sing 
you put your back to someone, notice. And the second one is from the book, from the same court as that first one. Pick up the pace, bitch, a minuet. Carve the air with the back of your hand. Present a peach, a palm, a floating oasis. My midline finger, voila. How do you say? Just the tip. Staunch, starched, dotted and dimpled, a little creamy. A squid wrapped round my ribs, zipped and clipped upright. Bacteria on the cheeks is the same in both places. My inky lower lip. Loosen your goose by tightening your clam harder with your heel. I give you my neck, my middle pearl to your raw palm. You give me an eye on the head of a pin. I wear it on my belly, just the tip. Chin dropped, toes in line, wiggle the spine to straighten, nod, click, simp, swish, swat, swat. Tentacled clap track, red raw across your, the bacteria on the cheeks is the same in both places. Thank you, Dottists. All right, Megan. Megan, Megan Grapuzzle. Okay, so lucky for us, um, uh, we, have an, we have our next it's one. It's Cat's turn, Cat George's. Um, this uh, journal may not, it's a, it's a piece of work in and of itself in that each piece is carefully selected to make a progression throughout the course of the book. So um, it's, it's a read, it, it's like a novel, but it's pictures, it's words, it's data, and a lot of things make no sense. Kind of like the world. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna read the piece that follows Megan's piece in the book. Her piece was called Pick Up the Pace, Bitch, a Minuet. This piece is called Bitch, You're the Robot. It's by Bonnie Joy from Lucerne, Switzerland. You asking me if I'm a robot is like Mercury giving me retro shame. There is a difference between metal and fragrant, juicy organisms. That's the reason smell vision never worked. The mathematics of your outside world creates patterns similar to spirographs, but is there a mathematics of being cold soaked in a down jacket on an orange cruiser bike in the middle of Swiss traffic circle in a mountain rainstorm? Humans can live without some of their parts. For example, I have lived 44 years without an appendix, but you robot cannot function without your sensors. You base your operations on logic, but some things are illogical, like what represents the beyond in bed, bath, and beyond. Hmm. Humans inherit personality traits and respond to their environments. Like I decide what shade of pink I will wear on any given day. I choose where to mindfully aim my camera and what constitutes nutritious screen time. Honey, nobody programs me. What can you reboot in another bot? Don't show me photos of your B9 great grandfather Rodney and ask me if I'm a human. Maybe you can dream, but I can feel that dull ache deep in my gut that says something isn't right in the world. And now is the time to refresh our collective consciousness and solve all these problems together. Besides, robots can't dance. But I slay because I partied in my grandmother's silver shoes to an orchestra of cicadas on the Delaware Raritan towpath. Don't you ignore me, robot. What's wrong? You need an electrical charge? Give me a break. I use rest as resistance, sleep as my balm. You say you can dance? Touche, hombre. I can do the robot. But can you do the human? <laughs> Maybe you can automate through the motions, but water is the universal solvent. Water is essential for life. So drink up, bitch, because if you don't got it in you, then you're the robot. All right, that was Bonnie Joy. And it was Pat George's. Here right. she is right here. 
Okay. Um, I think we're going to bring up uh, our next uh, reader, who is Karen Hildebrand. How about right. that? Where is she? Karen. Where is Karen? Karen. There she is. Yay. Karen, hey, take it away. Hey, so um, Karen couldn't make it tonight. You can call me Candy, but maybe you should call me Bitch. I don't know. Um, but anyway, here, this is called Meat. I want you to know, I put eyeliner on for this glaring feedlot boxing match. The golden gloves, baby, is the best thing going. Right hook to the best, right hook to the temple, spitting blood in a slimy mouth guard. Torso slick, pulse clocking the round. What do I know of wrapping knuckles, the squeal sneakers on rubber, teardrops dangling from this one's black curls. The, sp the split in his smile as the referee lifts his fist. Crotch shot of the can-can dancers. We wish to file an objection to the way we are portrayed in panties with our legs perpetually in the air. Let the record show fresh crew cuts and yellow letter sweaters. We are more than number two pencils lined up in a box, sharpened to a point and worn to a nub. Watch as we lift our brows in cannon and flit from stamen to pistol. Your teeth leave tracks on our torsos. We aspire to live alone in an ice hut with a line sunk deep. Tune our harps to the sonic vibration of fish. Cash has no currency. Make me, spend me, count me, crumple me into your pockets. Sew me into your hat. Sugar me, daddy. I multiply so fast you get the zeros wrong. Squeeze me, curl me, fry me in quail eggs. Suffer me red. Weather the palm fronds whip and hue paper thin and snarling, hold me up to piss and flap. Karen! Karen! She's in this book, Wonderful. 15. So Fantastic. everything connects. We have a connect, there's a connecting theme going on here. You know, these pieces are connecting very well. So yes. thank you so much for your participation. And it's right. a pleasure to see you, Karen. Yeah. Our next reader is one, two, three, Jerry Johnson. Please welcome Jerry Johnson. Unmute. Hey. All righty, all righty. I have two pieces and let's get going. Oh, thanks, Peter Cat, for accepting my work and inviting me here today. Let's move along. First piece Langston's Rivers. Earlier today, I saw a t shirt worn by someone not of my own race. The t shirt said, Stop killing black people. I nodded my head towards her. She nodded back. She understood my quiet bravo. Seated at my desk chair, headphones on, listening a dirge of sorrows, flattened, raised, bruised, reds of blood seeping. I pause. I hear Langston's rivers. Why the murders? Why the rapes? Why the hangings? I hear Emmett Till ask, why, why, why? I hear Medgar ask. I hear Martin ask. I hear Malcolm ask. They ask, is it over? I hear Trayvon answer. I hear Brianna answer. I hear Eric answer. I hear George Floyd answer. I hear many others answer. They say it's much worse now. I listened to Langston's Rivers. The now weeps, the Euphrates sobs, the Mississippi screams. Seated my 
desk chair, headphones on, listening, a dirge of sorrow. We cross our own bridge of sighs. We tread our own trail of tears. We still live a nightmare. Nonetheless, we still dream a dream. From the book. Maintenance 15 from I Awoke in Charlottesville. Another train ride, a private car due to COVID-19. 1.45 in the morning, the steward made my bed. I'm six feet, four inches tall. I worried, but to my surprise, I snugly fit. Soon I drifted into dreamland. Then I awoke in Charlottesville in a postlude of aftermath of, of horrid nightmare. I gazed out my window, fog and haze walked up and down the street beneath burning rays of the morning sunshine. I thought about the Unite the Right Supremacist Rally of 2017, when far right, alt right, right wing, malicious, neo-Nazi, neo-fascist, neo-Confederate, Klu Klux Klansmen, and violent riot masqueraded as protests. Now outside the window, my, my private room, my train, just shadows of fog and haze, walking on the street beneath the burning. Shadows of fog and haze, shadows of fog and haze, soon burned by the light of day. My train leaves Charlottesville. Soon I will arrive in Washington, D.C., well, I, where I will see a capital recently besieged by violence masquerading freedom. In time, the daylight will melt the haze, the fog, the lies, the terror, the onslaught, the murder, the masquerade, our fears, our tears. I awake no longer are we in Charlottesville. Thank you. Jerry, thank All right, you. Jerry, thank you very much. That was strong pieces, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna get the book. The the poems in the book. Get the Buy book. book. See it. Okay. Nineteen on fifteen. Anywhere you can get a book, it's there. Yeah. Thank you. All Thanks, right. Thanks, Jerry. We're gonna next welcome to the stage, Matthew Hubert. Hubert. Hey hey da 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 da. Welcome all, thank you. This is so great to be here. I have two pieces. The first one's in the book. It's called A Bop Surd, and it has an epigram from Camus. I'm not gonna butcher the French. I'll just translate it roughly. It says, after the revolution, conscience is born. A Bop Surd. Hail the holy jester, the holy fool, the holy fool, the cosmic goof, Friday night under the amber cone of dim street lamp, patting my pockets, pants, and chest, looking the fool. I couldn't find my meaning anywhere. I know I had some when I left the house, heard it clink my keys on the way out the door. Jean-Paul called this feeling nausea, but he was always a bit of a drama queen. Why should dying in an empty room be, no more, be more nauseating than dying with a deity? I stopped patting my pockets and embraced the absurd instead. Meaning isn't a gift, it's how cats signify. Pockets empty, I left the street corner and whistled my way into the dark. Cosmic goof, holy jester, holy fool. And next I was thinking about reboot and I was thinking that uh, I wanted to approach a little bit of a reboot from the other side of the concept. And this is also has an epigram, by the way. This is called Siddhartha Crosses the Einstein-Rosen Bridge. And the epigraph is uh, from Li Jin Yiswan, who said, if you meet the Buddha on the road, kill him. Metaphor opens a door, a step through to knowing, step through, step through before metaphor fills the door backlit majestically and seems the full vista. That's when the trouble begins. The gate self opens. Be gatekeeper and traveler. And why not 
Gate two. Siddhartha intersects the Einstein-Rosen bridge here. Find the metaphor on the road. You know what to do. Thank you. Thank you. Da 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 da. Da 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 da. Thank you, Matthew Hubert. All right. We are we are growing and championing champion this uh, craziness of the world with our magical Dada show tonight. And I think that that we should all just take a brief break and let's show everybody who's here watching and participating. Oh my God, look at all these Yay! people. Yay, let's give ourselves a hand for being here and being a part of this show. Even the people who are black, black screens and names, they are applauding right now. So we are now at this moment, we're gonna go back to our speaker view, which Whoa. is, hey, and we are gonna welcome to the stage a long time uh, performer, poet, and uh, and uh, Peter, take it away. Linda Lerner, yay! And um, can you hear me? Yes, okay, and I recorded the two poems I'm doing because of voice problems I've been having. The first one, A Simple Matter, is um, in the book. It starts soon, I hope. Hi, the title is the first line. A simple matter of checking off the correct number of crossroads to prove you're not a robot. Miss one, given stop signs to count. You're still stalled at the one crossroad you miss. The stop signs begin multiplying. You're really trying to get the number right, but something's got your mind in a chokehold. The planet is going to hell. There's less and less air to breathe. A nickel, a dime, a quarter winds its way through city streets into your head. A nickel, a dime, I work for food. You can't shut out, can't do anything to stop what's happening. Keep trying to get the number right to prove you're not a robot, unable to move forward or backward. Resist the only option left when choice is taken from you. And this was on page, is on oh, page 182 of Mantana. The second poem is when we began to have finally some hope we might beat this pandemic, um, although some people are fighting it. Um, called Survival Lines. Hi. Okay, um, Survival Lines. The line stretched out a long block, rounding a corner and crisscrossing with other lines I'd stood on to protest a war or an injustice which often mobbed out of control. This line stayed intact, unlike lines to see a movie get on a plane or for a store sale. It had a different urgency about it. No one joked or smiled, stood apart as though behind bars we looked out from, struggling to stay warm on a bitterly cold day, stamped our feet or moved back and forth in place. One man pointed to a nearby building where he worked, wished he could wait inside. Another said he buried his brother last week, didn't say why, didn't have to. I knew why I was on this line. Unlike one sudden street closings around Times Square forced me on as I was heading to the theater. Feeling trapped and angry, hadn't smelled smoke coming from a car, two vendors spotted, or that a bomb which had been ignited failed to go off until I was safely off that line. Craning my neck to see how much further, bumped into my mother's voice on the 1930s line to buy food. Bank lines my grandfather and others stood on for hours to withdraw money, knocked off by, that's all for today, voice, reaching me nearly a century later, as inch by inch, the line I stood on moved past it. Thank you, um, Peter and Kat, for putting this together, for putting the show together and doing it so consistently every single year. It's amazing. I can't hear you. 
the sound is off. Okay. Um, Thank you. All right, Linda Lerner. Wow, that those are what a trooper. Those oh, are some she, strong pieces, and she didn't even mention she has a brand new book out. So, oh yeah, you know, it's it's beautiful that she's not only in our Dada Journal, but also with a brand new book that is getting rave reviews everywhere. And taking the F train is the name of it. Yeah, yes. taking the F train. It's beautiful and and <laughs> strong poet. So here is Peter oh, going to talk. I am going to say the Oystianos are coming, <laughs> but we have one reader before them. Uh, that was on the uh, on the list a special reader that uh, was able to join us uh, uh, tonight and she's coming right now she's another trooper uh, Patricia Leonard has been in the book for many years and I hope that she still will be here she is and take it away Patricia good to see, good you. To see you hi thank you guys for always including me I'm glad I was able to make it tonight <laughs> <laughs> So I am reading my piece from Montanat 15. It's called The Colors I Taste. Sometimes I wonder if the madness is only in my own head or not. Do the colors I taste relay to the rest of the world? Can they relate to the person standing next to me if I tried to speak it into existence? How can I explain that the musty stale taste has left me stained with heartbreak and I stand alone in the rain drenched in red? That the newspapers I once read is now running black, white, and gray with a hint of mint and cardamom, heavy with sorrow and grief that it may never see the lights of day again. This world may never know its print for all we do is play on the internet. The world wide web clicking here and clicking there. The caviar of life and it tastes like greed, grit, and disdain. And it, it's what makes you rich. And if money is all you worry about, then you'll always be poor. You create these robots and disconnect from human interactions and become numb to one another while I'm watching you dumb yourself down and fry each one of your brain cells. And I'm wondering if madness is in my head or is it in yours? You break the rules, but obey the laws. And now I know that madness is in your head. Some sort of unwritten rule makes you self-righteous because you seem to be wrapped up so much in your own shit that you can't own your own shit. And it's left me with a taste of disgust. I pitied you, but not enough to help you. The world keeps spinning and the bluest of oceans still are salty, but now are plagued with guilt and shame. I can taste the warmth of the yellow sun dripping regret of pollution into the plants, recycling the Kool-Aid we've all been feeding our earth. And the madness is in our heads. It has gushed out like a broken dam and not even Noah's Ark could save us now. Hopefully the three brain cells and Google has a good idea. Thank you. Thank you, Patricia. Thank you, Patricia. Thanks for joining us. And uh, we'll see you soon, okay, in real life. Uh, we'll yeah. Be all right. Thank you, so Patricia. Thanks. So glad you could be here tonight. Okay. Uh, now, um, where'd do, they go? Who do we have next? The Oceanus. We're going to go with Ruth first. Uh, where, 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 uh, where are they? Where'd the Oceanus go? Oh. There they, they're uh, sitting here. We're looking for you. We're searching. We have so many people you. on the show. Oh my God. Look there at that. They are. Are. Please welcome Ruth Oceano. Unmute. Unmute. Unmute, unmute. Unmute. How's that? Yes. Beautiful. Okay, I'm Ruth Oceano, and I want to thank you both for a fabulous issue and for including me in the last wonderful few issues, and I'm thrilled. Uh, my contribution to the last issue is called The Future is Female, and it's a hand-cut collage, which I totally was inspired to make by the theme of the show, and it's great to have it shown and to be in Maintenon, and it's right here. I hope you can see it. There's glass, so it's a little... And now I'm going to take you through a little voyage of one of my collage books, and it's called, It's a Wonderful World. And it's 
all about women and how they inspire me in their physical way and also how fascinated I was by calendars calendars that use pinups and I saw these pinups and I thought wow great theme so this whole book is devoted to pinups and then after a while I thought but wait there's more fabulous women so I'm gonna just flip through this if you'd like to see more of my work I'm on Instagram under beads bug b-e-a-d-s-b-u-g or my name Ruth Oistiano and this one is called practicing my archery the next one is called the robot riot i think i skipped one the robot riot and i always use data elements so none of them should be taken very seriously then we have the bearskin rug of course the beautiful girl sitting on her bearskin rug always an iconic figure this is called scintillating views and there's always a cover up in these old beautiful pinups so they're never like raunchy like some of the stuff that we've seen this one is called genie in a bottle and here's the male fantasy coming true genie in a bottle no time this one is called a walk in the garden and for those of you who've worn black stockings with garters you know how much fun that is and always data elements this one is called, oh my gosh, poor thing. She's attacked by a crazy figure here and there's all kinds of crazy things going on. This one is called Your House or Mine and that's been heard by many a woman, I'm sure. This one is the underwater unctions. These are creatures that live under the sea and she's a four-legged one of them. This one is called Bountiful beauties, because we love bountiful women, and these are some of the most bountiful you'll find in print. This one is called Cyber Woman Meets the Stone Age. So now I'm updating a little bit of my pinups and bringing them more contemporary. This one's called this one's called Jungle Journey, and if you can notice in the little corner there, I stuck myself in there, right down here at the bottom. Here I am dressed in my red bra. This one is called Botticelli's Revenge. And here comes Botticelli coming out of her shell and all these beautiful women around her. This one's called Hey Girls, Party Time. And you know, girls love to party. Here they are. Love those fishnets. They always look great. No matter what you wear, put your fishnets on, you're hot. Diamond jungle cats come alive in this beautiful collage of jungle jewelry and real jungle wild animals. Here is the black lace beauty covered with black lace on her eyes. And last but not least, it's called Follow Me Home. And we're going to follow her anywhere. She's quite beautiful. She's got a great body. And that's the end of my book. I hope you liked it. And again, Beads Bug, Instagram, come up and see me. Great ending. See you again. Thank you so much. Bye. Valerie, I take it. There Hello, there everybody. Is. There's Valerie. Hello. Hello. I'm going to start with my poem in the Metonah. And... Uh, uh, it's called Singing in the Lifeboats. The trees are covered with shivering eyes beside the shipwreck of the world, reversing the extinction in the belly of a whale. Gods are atoning for their sins. The involution has been postponed. After drinks with dead seabirds beneath the big driftwood stage, unplugged and plugged again, we demand the rebirth of all saints of nuclear disaster. Timeless radioactivity doesn't frighten the seaweed butterflies. Follow the footprints down the volcano crater. 
whose explosive lava ball became the moon. Repetitious frustration of deadly pandemics, vindictive boredom, sharpening teeth with fingernails, volumes of terminal cannibalistic suicide notes, flocks of bicycles covering the burning sky, the light from stained glass monocle covers the ignorant clothes of sweaty lovers. Rebirth is around the corner, singing in a deep water. And I would end uh, this uh, introduction with an homage to a contributor uh, to maintenance for many, many, many numbers, Steve Dalashinsky, who unfortunately left us about a year or so ago, and we suffer his loss. And I would like to read a memorial poem dedicated to Steve Dalashinsky, a participant in Maintenance on the page 100 with a beautiful collage. So look into your maintenance on page 100 for Steve Dalashinsky. And this is the poem called A Final Note. As we know, he died performing, performing a poem. It's unbelievable. Tragedy after tragedy, Steve has gone like a soluble fish in the ocean, melting the swirls of colors breaking in a rhythms of a trumpet, dissolving in a glass of gin and tonic, escaping the junkyard of trivia, making echoes in the streets of Soho, his cantankerous voice heckling my readings. Every day, someone leaves their apartment and never returns. Now, he is wearing my unfinished haiku, Steve, part of the composition without a coda, in every garden, in every jazz joint. I'm watching a video on Facebook at his last reading. He was riffing in the end, in the end, in the end, over and over, in the end, in the end. But what is the end? The end of space? is what that he meant, the tragic kabuki. I refuse to believe that an eclipse is the final view of the moon. The rebel duo lost his trio. Steve will rise again like a shadow ghost, not in Long Island, but here in East Village. His poetry, his effervescent spirit will haunt us until the day we die. Goodbye, Steve. And thank you, Mentena, for publishing me and Steve and Ruth Oistiano. Yeah. God bless. Thank you, Valerie. That was so beautiful. We, we love, love Steve. We love you. We love, we love Steve. You. All right. Thank so, you. So uh, um, I just also wanted to mention uh, uh, Steve. Steve, we, we miss him dearly. And uh, another person that we are now we just recently lost. Who, that we recently lost, who's been a long time contributor to Minna, is is from San Francisco's Jack. Well, he's Hirschman. from here, the Bronx. Yeah, right? from the Bronx yeah. originally. Right, yeah, of course. So, okay. it, so New York nod and shout out to Jack Hirschman, who we just you know the world's a different place without both of them. So definitely, Peter. Who's next? Um, next up will be Puma Pearl. Thank you. Okay. She's coming. Thank you for right. including me again. There she Yay. is. <laughs> here I am. Yay. You'll be here. Yay. And I have two. I'll start with this short one called Trading Words. Not so long ago, I wished I could trade all my words for just one fucking hug. Just one. Today, we talk in pictures and colors, rhyme, chords, bass lines, and softness. Everything has been said. 
Sing like the morning, bark like the sun. Trade a caress for an old school poem. And this is the one that was in the book. And it's based on a dream I had when I was four years old and never forgot. And it's called Visions of the Future. I wake up late. Everyone has eaten pumpkin and green apples for breakfast. In my future, it is always autumn. We live communally in long houses and take meals together. Mrs. God's kitchen is in the center of the yard. Janice Joplin loves to cook. I no longer fear a suicide or depression. Now there's the option of sleeping for weeks until problems pass. There is no need for drugs. There are no guns. I ride Harleys in the desert like the girl in the Neil Young song. Nobody is old unless they want to be, which some do. There is no concept of ugly. There are a million words for beauty and a trillion for the wind. Thank you. Puma! Thank you, Puma. Hey, thank you, Puma. Thanks, Puma. Maintenant 15, we are celebrating the uh, what a the NYPL yeah. New York City Dada launch uh, for number one. And next next Thursday we'll be doing this again with another nineteen or so of our favorite New York City performers and contributors. And yeah. uh, that's no less uh, uh, on everyone here today. We love them all, and we're so happy to be able to get together with everybody. Uh, if not in person, hey, we're here. We're in the same city. We've got good energy going. We've got pages that work together, pieces that work together. We've all worked together before. Yeah. Uh, we all create this book together. So there we are. We're doing it. We're doing it. Yeah, and I wanted to invite everybody who is here tonight Come also next week. It's going to be a whole nother group of people and it's going to be incredible. So who do we have next? Um, next, who do we have next? Nika Ray. Where is she? Nika. Here, I am. here I am. I hear her. I hear We're her. We're looking. Do you see me? I'm Yay! here. Okay, please <laughs> welcome to the virtual uh, New York Public Library, Tompkins that Square one, Park. Nika Ed Ray. Ed He's Hello. Yay. Yay. Okay. All right. Can you guys speak up? Can you hear me? Yes. You sound great. Um, go See ahead. See you on the other side. All right. Okay. Beware the dotted line. You can hear me? I'm breaking up. Can you? All right. I'm having some trouble. You're good? Okay. Beware of the dotted line. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, two, two. Blackout. Fuzz. Fuck. Are you out there? Fuzz. There exists a maze of dotted lines pointing the way to in or out, out or in, in out, in out, in and out. It's a burger joint in California. No more. No more California. No more in and out. No more sex. No more high society. All dying. The West Coast has fallen into the ocean. The East Coast has been swallowed alive by glass tower luxury condominiums. The Poseidon Adventure meets Godzilla in the age of Titanic, tyrannical president. Alert, alert, alert. There is no election. There is no news. There is no view. All screens have gone dotted. All doors have gone locked. All rational voices have gone muzzled. Buildings keep going up. Oceans keep sinking. President keeps declaring. White men keep dancing. Plastic surgery keeps restructuring. 
the privileged keep killing fish, clouds, hopes, ingenuity. They are King Henry VIII throwing drumsticks in the wind, hitting workers in the face, locking mouths up. Truth is illegal. Lies are truth. Ears are plugged, eyes glued shut. Dotted lines lead nowhere. There exists no more are you in or are you out. No more sides. This is not a football game. Turn on the television, plug in the computer, throw the smartphone in the corner, push the screen out the window, jump into the street, go in for battle, say no, question the way the 1960s taught me. Reclaim power for the people, for the ocean to breathe, for the skies to be clear, the rivers clean, a world for all of us to be. Thank you. Thanks, you guys. Uh, all right, Nika, thank you very much. So good to see you. Okay. So we're gonna we're gonna keep on going with love your pieces. The, we are the plagiarists. And we are here. Uh, we have a, uh, we will have a maintenance 16. Uh, our, our, uh, what is the theme? Well, the theme, uh, I'm going to try to win you guys over. Kat is, is, doesn't like it, but I do. But what I want to say is our submission period has changed. It is no longer October 15th to January 15th because it's already past October 15th. And we're getting a later start. In fact, we're starting on the first of the year, of the new year, because it's a new theme. It's a new journal and we're starting on the new year so we have a new perspective to begin with now i've been thinking about a lot of different uh, uh themes and the best one i like is net zero not net zero net zero because yeah we're six days late we're four and a half years too soon all of these things going on net zero my ass you know what I mean? Nobody's doing a goddamn thing about it except writing a uh, clickbait, you know? So I'm yet that it's not against the Russians. They got enough trouble too. It's about <laughs> no, no zero. The only zero there is, is the future we have. So if you like net zero, I need your vote. Kat doesn't, doesn't like it. So she thinks it points to the Russians. So let's hear about, the, you know, let, if anybody likes it, let's hear. And if not, I'm going to keep on the burner okay we'll discuss later <laughs> all right so next up please welcome to our donna stage bruce robinson Yay, bruce. welcome okay thank you uh i think this is a billy collins joke uh, dante is about to give a poetry reading and he starts out i'll just read three poems okay i'll just read three poems Rumination on the utility of gas-powered leaf blowers. Yes, you're awake, no different from yesterday. It's only your eyes, no wonder they're open. Trees will seize upon the point that persuaded them. Turtles clamber like cra crabs to their nests. Thing is, just in opening your eyes, the moon may show you its darkened knees. The sun send ice beams to shatter the soil. Dolphins will sing their deliriums, manatees their cohorts. Sand slice our feet like rapiers, unfazed by argument. It's only your eyes. You'd think they'd be open. And, uh, this is medication on a forbidding morning. Here's a room, an empty room. Or has it just dawned on you, you were thinking, there's a moon? A quiet dwelling, unadorned. It looks intent upon, uh, nothing, upon on perhaps nothing, nothing at all. Perhaps the forlorn air that lives there, around wherever rust, rest gives way to rust, forewarned. Or a visitor we may encounter, who wonders that the unhinged motes of dust that drift beside him should be so stunned by any room. A room with no light on, or a room without a light. 
a room encumbered by a door, but an open door outside a room. And last, comedy hour with four non-commercial interruptions. It's the joke about the in-laws. They're gone, what a relief. Well, they're gone, it's true. The sound too, except our own, the few residual cormorants, the groan of a right whale. Over there, the expiration of the last remaining embers, the gruff love of wave on sand. Oh, that other joke, that line in the sand, cargoes of, oil, of iron still roiled by the sea, nowhere to go, no here, no there, no joke. So much sea and wind, toying with those few forests of flame, the earth's grown flatter. Where did everyone go anyway? Not our question to ask, well, sand. The joke about the open-ended hourglass, bada boom. Sand in your face, the former, the latter. Thank you. Very good. Thank you, Bruce. Good to see you. Good to see you. And, I, uh, I loved especially the last piece, uh, the joke about the uh, uh, open-ended uh, sand thing. Uh, OK, so thank you. The hourglass. Hourglass. Yeah. Open-ended hourglass. Time Which marches on. Which hand do I on. use? I forget. OK, so next up, Take care, thank Bruce. you. Uh, Thank you for being here. Oh, how many more readers do we have left? Uh, we have three more readers. Oh my God, can you believe it? Boom, boom, boom. Every every other minute, a new thing. Excitement, danger, relaxation. And <laughs> process, process, process. Go ahead. Huh? <laughs> we are the plagiarists. We have stolen a plague and brought it back with us. Uh, the last plague, uh, mm. whichever one you know you think it is, pick a plague. We are plagiarists. We'll take it and we'll steal it and we'll use it. Who's next? So uh, next <laughs> up is Angela Sloan. Please welcome Angie. And where where is she? If you got to bring her up, she will come up oh, if okay. she starts to speak. Oh, Hello. Okay. Hello. Can you hear me? Angela, almost. We can not. There she me. is. Yay! Where's Hi. the last one? Hello. Okay. <laughs> okay. Nice to see you. I'm going to put you up now. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So I'm reading. Um, the first poem is called Reset. It's from the Maintenant 15 journal. Thank you so much, uh, Peter and Kat, for doing this and including me. It's on uh, page 74, uh, the first poem on that page, if you guys want to look. It's called Reset. I awaken in the dark and take an ice cold shower, drink wine for breakfast and undress for work. In my office, my coworkers are fast asleep. The telephones have been disconnected. A friend invites me to lunch. We eat garbage from the street and catch friendly mice in our palms like starving children. To freshen up, I must my hair, smear my lipstick and tear my stockings. I tell my boss to get lost I leave early. I rip my paycheck to shreds and sprinkle it like confetti over Ninth Avenue. Once home, I let the cat out and hope it never returns. Okay, and I actually have one more poem and it's called In the City and it's um, hot off the press from my new chat book called Stories About Love. And here it is. In the city, surgical masks litter the concrete. Graffiti melting through blackened snow is a rainbow of smeared fluorescent color. Crocuses push through damp black earth, scattered with bottle caps, blue vinyl gloves, a child's lost barrette, her ice cream wrapper. The dead bird hoped to see itself in a cracked mirror to preen and admire its iridescent plumage but instead is left by the curb on garbage day. Thank you, that's all.
Thank you so much. Thank you, Angela Sloan. Okay. Thanks wow. for joining us. Isn't that wonderful? We're 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 running out of readers. We're going to have to start over again and go through uh, everybody. Oh. Again. <laughs> oh my gosh! Can you believe we have had such an exciting time, and we have just two readers left. First up, please welcome Zev Torres. It's for Zev. Thank you. There he is. Zev Torres. There you go. Oh. Please do not misinterpret this as a failure of will or as a contemporary act of heresy. Is it not reasonable that from time to time our convictions will waver, that we'll question the purpose of our rituals, step away from our traditions, feel justified in castigating our faith as a ruse or a swindle? when it inhibits us from expressing our confusion, commands us to voice platitudes that cut our mouths, condemns us when we seek a refuge where we can pray softly and alone in other than prescribed words, or during those rare but weighted moments when our qualms and misgivings declaim that the loftiness of our perceptions. One more time to tell how this is the season of what now? Now is the time of returning with thought jewels polished and gleaming. Now is the test to the boomerang tossed in the night of redeeming. Think it through past the instinctive and the reflexive beyond the conditioned responses and those that are socially acceptable. Sift out the obvious and the ways it's always been. Filter the images that come to mind, that bound into view as if they've come into contact with fire. Through a well-polished lens that corrects distortions and enhances perceptions, enables you to apprehend subtle affectations, discern the discrepant motivations underlying a plot twist or a radical change of heart. Fathom the amalgam of incidents and episodes predating the tale's conception. As you delve the abyss, encompassing the four corners of the page, ordeal creeds and hurry, hurry incantations are catalyzed into a wellspring of ambivalence that nurtures and nourishes all variants of creation. This is the season of what now? It would be appropriate, don't you agree? If we sat together on a sliver of the moon our legs dangling over the side, back and forth in space, leaning back just enough so we can grasp the edge. Laughing as the crumbs from the pumpkin muffins you baked and brought along float off into the cold, alluring darkness, sitting close to one another, but not too close, not suggestively close, but close enough so that one of us could reach out if the other started to slip off forward or back, which could happen because the slope of the moon is slick and narrow and it is easy to lose focus, to lose poise, to lose balance, could reach out with that simple, tender touch that replenishes hope. Thank you. Package there, very good, very good, and good to see you. Good to see you, Zach. That was a great multimedia piece, and uh, so much you can <laughs> yeah, do. Yeah, no, I was gonna do that, what can I do? Yeah, thank <laughs> you. Know, thank you. All right. The, the plagiarist uh, set, you know, we're, uh, you know, we're, we yes. are, we're good with that. We're the plagiarists. Yeah. And we have just one more reader. She's been here the whole time. I think she was the first person to sign in on the Zoom meeting. She's been very patient, hasn't turned off her mute button during the entire show. And now, please welcome to the stage, Joni H.F. Suzuki, Joni, Joni, take off your mute button now. Ah. Thank you, Peter Cat, uh, for doing this tremendous publication. 
your work is a work of art and your graciousness is unbound and uh, wonderful to listen to all the readers, just really very inspiring. I didn't mind waiting at all. Never can say farewell. No, 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 no to 2020. I think I've got a tattoo of it smack dab in the middle of my tuchus. Toxic ink will never bleed out the way passion splutters by passing normal sphincters. sphincters. Normal? There's that word again. Damn it. Normal will never be again. Like, will it always be 2020? Don't will it. No redos, despite COVID phase two. I dream that mindless viruses and evil heartlessness can pass like gas into the exosphere so high up in a region where religion strays and nothing stays but transcendental goop confined to a menstrual cup with half a sandwich, a bush tit hides behind April blossoms, embarrassed pink by its X-rated name. Tit bush tit, tit bush tit, tit bush tit. Oh, sing me not of lupulent flowers, neither embattle me with birds, bodily functions, or alien language, alien meaning out of this biosphere. If we're going to speak beyond, let's speak beyond normal in 2021, and likewise in 2120, there will be snow caps, milk duds, and raisinets. Doubtlessly, something sweet will replenish this tortured globe and its syrupy, wimpy inhabitants. Maybe a second chance at the whirligig dance. Could it be? All quiet on the Twitter front. Uh. Do I have time for a second? Cool. Pleasure in a word. Pleasure churns chunks, eye blinking chunks, like smashed popcorn on the floor. Kernels coupling courage with brazen burnt skin. A wrapper. Poem is a wrapper. Poem is wrapped up or wrapping feelings. How do you write feelings? not write about, but write them. Flow, no one wants to feel your flowings. You flower, you still life, you bowl of fruit. Fruity tones, fruity thoughts, fruity loins, fruity teratomas. And besides, I would much prefer an awakening, not that it will cure the past. Nothing can compensate for Shoa and Jim Crow, uh, Zilch can counterweight the bulk of Birkenau and three-fifths compromise. So many ways to temporalize as if yesterday's contemporary venness gets us off history's hook. Some transgressions cannot be overlooked. A highway with forward passage creates a sense of headwind. No more a nautical knot. Ought it not decide to melt like snow into cracks of profligacy? Ought not Bodiness defines centuries and nectar at the juncture of legs disguised as ideas. Stumble! Artificial light is not the sun and the moon, an untraceable shallow in a brain pan. There are rocks. I climb over craters, slide down. Slaps! I am afraid if left to mine's own devices, if in my blind eye I own my vices, I might just. No one cares about I. I is so very small. I barely deserves a capital. Ists gobble arrogance with cotton gin chasers in the soup. Do I believe that? Yes. No. Cracked. Like inadequate passwords. Was it ever okay to kill? Let's think of life as a ribbon. Libonucleic righteous and ruthless with rhythm, tipsy and heartened with song rhyme and many multicolored celluloid snakes swimming jubilantly through on their way to move again. Thank you, Joni. Joni. Um,
All right, Jody and Kev, Soziki, we did it. And let's go now. Okay. And we're going to we're going to have Peter say a few words now. We are. Yes. Oh, okay. I'm on the spot. I'm still rooting Net Zero. So I'm glad a few people have, have joined the Net Zero team. And and I think it's going to be, she thinks it's too much against Russia. Hey, Russia's too busy running a hundred countries and running the you know their uh, social media and and let's and wrap up this show. So we're gonna we're gonna wrap up this show. Metanon sixteen will begin January first. This is Metanon fifteen. This is the first NYPL what a beautiful, beautiful show. Nineteen actually twenty beautiful people actually nineteen because we didn't find George. Right. So where is George? So anyhow, we love George Wallace and hopefully he'll join us next week. We were uh, having uh, you know uh, anyhow. Well, we want to get everybody up here who's on the show, and we're all just going to say the word da 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 da. And so take and, off your mute. Take and, off mute. So let's all say da da, and then let's okay. send da 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 da, and send it us up. Send us da, off into the into da, the oblivion. Da 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 da